Good morning. My name is Rudy Marconi. I'm the first selectman in Richfield. And I've been in this position for approximately 20 years at this point. And it's been a great 20 years, wonderful 20 years, not without incidents. Um, I first got involved in politics in Richfield back in 1899 on planning and zoning, uh, then moved over to the Board of Selectmen in 93 and in 99 elected as the first selectman here. So it's been a wonderful involvement in our community. Um, and, you know, Richfield is a community of volunteers, so um, it's been a pleasure working with the so many different people that have been involved in our community and making our community what it is today. Um, it certainly isn't a one-person show here. That's a fact. Our community would not be what it is if it wasn't for places like the Richfield Historical Society that work so hard to preserve the character, the historical significance of our community. It's, it's the top thing going and we need to protect it. So back a couple of months ago, in the 1st of April, we had a Board of Selectmen's meeting. I didn't feel too well prior to that. It was a Zoom meeting. We were already in lockdown, had closed town hall for several weeks at that point. And I began the meeting uh, with a bad cold, a sinus problem. Made it through the meeting, went home, and mentioned to my wife who wasn't feeling well. And that was the last time uh, I was here in the town hall building. Uh, that night I went to bed, Thursday, stayed in bed, Friday, uh, spoke with the doctor. He made an appointment to be tested at Danbury, the test on Saturday, and uh, the test came back positive on Monday. Not knowing what to expect, how do you feel when someone says, okay, you're positive for the coronavirus? I, don't, I didn't know what that meant uh, because so many people were experiencing so many different strains of this virus, um, there was a little bit of a unknown there. And that concerns you, not knowing what tomorrow or the following day may bring. And as we progressed, I didn't feel too badly on Tuesday. In fact, I did an Everbridge notice. Uh, that's a um, 911 notice we put out, and I've been keeping people informed about the number of cases and what's happening in our community, and I would do one every night. And people have gotten fairly used to receiving those. They find it helpful, informative, knowing that we're at work trying to do everything possible to uh, coexist with this virus. On Wednesday, um, again, feeling similar to Tuesday, but uh, my wife felt that I looked pretty good, and uh, we went to bed, and she uses a... Uh, a, a sound machine to help her get to sleep. I got up, went into the bathroom because one of the one of the many many uh, symptoms that I had was a sense of nausea, and it was similar. I've only been seasick once, but there's no question that um, it, it was a seasickness type of nausea. Um, having difficulty opening a childproof package for mm -hmm. Zofran. I ended up sleeping on the bathroom floor feeling absolutely horrible and never really made it back from that point. Uh, my blood ox had fallen and we had three doctors we were consulting with. Um, the question was, did I go to the, was I, should I go to the hospital? There was a bed there for me. Uh, my personal care physician here, my PCP said, no, I don't want you in the hospital. Let's see if we can handle it bringing oxygen to your home. So on the 8th, 9th of April, I went on oxygen, which definitely did help get my blood ox back up to the 90, 91 level. And of course, they want you at 95. And for those of you who may not understand why that's important, that, uh, that test, that little uh, indicator that they put on your figure that gives your blood ox, let's, is a sign of how well your lungs are functioning in getting oxygen into your bloodstream to feed your organs. So it's a pretty important test and a um, barometer for where the patient's at. When I was without oxygen, it would drop to 86, 85. I only had one time where it was down at 83, but mostly 86 to 87. Stayed on oxygen for eight days, 24-7. Um, I'm not a very good patient. My wife was my caregiver. And I got to give her all the credit in the world. She's a wonderful human being, especially for putting up with me as a 
pretty sick patient, but um, she forced me to get up out of bed and walk every day because the illness really captures your body and takes your body away from you. And all you want to do is stay in bed. You don't want to have anything to do. You don't want to eat. I lost 12 to 15 pounds. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to get up. I had fevers. I had headaches. I had sore throats. I had cramps, upset stomachs, uh, name it. Think of anything you can think of over the years that you've had as symptoms when you've been ill and put them all into this illness. And that's an indication of what you feel like. And you don't know what's coming next. And they do return. You may have nausea. It was horrible for me. Um, I would take a Zofran. It would help. I'd fall asleep. I'd wake up. I'd have a sore throat. I'd have a headache. I'd have another fever, aches and pains, uh, loss of taste and smell. Like everything you've heard about this virus uh, is, is what I went through. So my strain was a little more perhaps than the average person uh, has experienced. And the strange thing about it is that my wife, Peggy, although my caregiver is surely thinking that she was going to have it as bad, uh, really only experienced a uh, low-grade fever for two days uh, and was down and out for about a total of five days, but took Tylenol and was able to handle it with Tylenol. I was a patient that was on hydroxychloroquine with a ZPEC or azithromycin combination along with uh, Tylenol, and this was a regimen and multiple vitamins that I took every eight hours. And uh, there was a lot of controversy about the hydro hydroxychloroquine. Um, but so far, knock on wood, uh, I haven't had any of the uh, cardiac side effects that some people are talking about. Although reading and listening, I did make an appointment with my cardiologist for an exam, just to double check. But about the 27th of, uh, yeah, it was the 27th that I felt a little bit better of April and well enough to do Zoom meetings for the Board of Selectmen on the 29th and 30th. And I've been told from people who attended those Zoom meetings, those were budget meetings that we you know, have to work our way through every year. And this year is no different, even though we have a virus. Uh, but working through those, my voice by the end of the meeting was strained, it was weak, and people could detect that. Um, but we did do those two meetings. Um, I continued to rest quite a bit. And then uh, once all your other symptoms, the last symptoms I had was a sore throat and a bad stomach where I had trouble digesting things. And that lasted for another good week and a half, about a week um, until that went away. And slowly uh, the sore throat finally went away. When I went back for a test for a negative, hopefully, so that I could get cleared, it came back as a presumptive positive. So therefore, anything with the word positive in it would not allow me back in this building or town hall, because I know the people who are working would probably throw me out the window at the second floor if I showed up having tested positive in any way. So I waited another 10 days working from home uh, doing a lot of work. The days were very, very long because when you work from home, you don't have people that you can, I can't say to Amy, Amy, do me a favor, see if you can get a hold of these people and follow up on this. I had everything there. There was no one to turn to but myself. So you end up putting in very long hours. And that did not make my wife happy because she's so concerned about my uh, lack of energy and, and uh, really shouldn't have been back to work that much, but we made it. Uh, this past Wednesday, I got my negative test and I brought everything back yesterday afternoon on Thursday, all of my books and computers and set up here in my office and getting back to work. So today's Friday. I guess you can tell I'm well because I do have a tie on today. I do wear a tie every day to work. Um, however, I hadn't worn one since April 1st. Um, the routine was pajamas 24 seven for a good three and a half weeks until I took a shower shaved and finally began dressing for the day, forcing myself again to get out. 
Um, but the important thing, a takeaway on that is having your spouse, your partner, someone to help you as a caregiver. That can be sure you get up and walk. Uh, the concern now is a lot about clotting. You'll read a lot about that today and this virus. I was able to hopefully avoid that through my constant walking at her beckoning. And, uh, and the breathing exercises I did, uh, I did those faithfully as she requested. Um, I felt like I was eight years old at, at, at some times with her asking me to get this stuff done. But thank you, Peggy, for everything you did. Because without her, I'm sure I wouldn't have experienced what I did and possibly it could have been a lot worse. So that's been my experience with the virus as a town. Um, through all of that, you continue to worry about the stores, the many stores that are closed on our main street. How do they reopen? On the 20th, the governor's called for a partial reopening. I formed a small committee a couple of weeks ago, made up of 10 people from throughout our community. And we have put together a guide for small businesses on the do's and don'ts. Um, and we have a hotline here at Town Hall, and I'll take advantage, 431-2718. For anyone who has any questions, there's a plethora of information available uh, on the internet, at the CDC, with Governor Lamont, and I urge you to pay attention to his daily briefings. Uh, if you're a business owner, uh, whatever kind of business you have, um, Adam Broderick, Broderick has been very, very involved in, in this small committee, as well as Kim Bova from the chamber, Support your chamber, support downtown Richfield. Mary Jones leading that, uh, a very proactive member. Rich Vazana, president of the RSO, Richfield Symphony Orchestra. And uh, Bob Hebert joined me from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mark Meacham, who is from the uh, Arts Council, representing the arts. So as I said, we had a cross section of the town looking at every situation. And the governor now is at a point, as I said, of reopening on May 20th for restaurants. It'll be a partial opening. Um, they're not allowed to serve inside, only outdoors. And each time he comes out with an opening and puts restrictions on it, it generates a tremendous number of questions. And that's why we formed this small committee to help those people looking for answers, to have a place to go to locally and to work with us. Our numbers here in our town, we have about 175 uh, people who have experienced a positive test for the virus. We're approaching 40 deaths. All but three are from our nursing homes and assisted living on Route 7. Uh, and it's very sad, very, very sad uh, to have lost that many people, especially those who are experienced, you know, the last part of life, um, living comfortably to have this virus and have the virus take them unexpectedly is tough for the families because in order to protect everyone, those facilities, hospitals don't allow any visitors. And I think that's one reason why they didn't want me going up to the hospital um, is because uh, I would be pretty much isolated myself uh, without anyone to help and that's again where the spouse, spousal help came in. So our town has experienced this like every other community. It's hard to tell where we'll be six months. It's hard to tell where we will be next week uh, because it is a serious illness. It's highly contagious. It affects the seniors over 65. Uh, probably a, the highest risk group that we have. Therefore, I believe that the governor will in all likelihood hold back on opening senior centers for the foreseeable future. Um, but now we're seeing where young children are uh, experiencing this, this virus as well. And that could be an absolute um, terrible situation. Let's hope that that virus, a mutation, I think of what we've seen in the adults uh, is controlled and is controlled quickly to minimize the impact that it has uh, uh, amongst the young people in our world. So I want to thank the Historical Society, and I know I've gone well over my time limit, uh, but thank the Historical Society and all the volunteers there for doing this little slice of history and for doing what you do. God bless you all. Thank you.